Greetings all, Benny Reese West. Uh, we're just going to do part two of the swing point system. So just in today's video, I'm just going to take the code that was done in the last video and I'm just going to tidy up um, the one glaring error that I had in there. And I'm going to also add in positions for short so we can have long and shorts together and we can compare those results. So I'm just going to start off here with a blank Jupyter notebook and I'm going to just import some libraries. And so all the libraries are the same, but this time I'm going to just also bring in from date time, import date time. And now in the next cell, uh, the reason I've imported date time is I'm just going to bring in a start date and I'm also going to um, declare a variable for the end, end date. So that way I can just sort of slice the data up into little segments or whichever sort of time frame that you want to um, check. Uh, but if you wanted to just go to today, you just put end date equals date time dot today with brackets and that will give you all the data up to today's date so the code I'm just going to leave the same as the spy but obviously if you want to do something else so if you want to do Apple you just change that to Apple um, whatever you like uh, but I'm just going to stick with the spy for now and I'm just going to leave the multiplier of the ATR at 2 so the next few cells, as a lot of these cells are, are just exactly the same as the last few videos where we're just going to bring in our support basis uh, fractals. We're also going to bring in the resistance basis fractals. We're going to concatenate uh, those two data frames into a temporary data frame. And then we're going to bring in an ATR column. Whoops, pardon me. Now the reason this has come up is because I've actually skipped a step. I need to download the actual data frame first. So to do that, what I'll do is I'll just add a frame uh, and move this up and I'll actually just whack in the data frame. Now that that's done, I can run this column and because we've got a data frame, it'll put in the ATR column. Now that that's in, I'm just gonna merge the swing column from the temporary data frame into DF and of course once we do that we have our data frame with our swim column and our ATR column in there. Next I'm just going to bring in the daily stop long and the daily stop short. Now I've used the close here but if you were using long you, you might want to just put the long below the low uh, and if you were using a short stop you might even want to put the close above the high so that's just a little um and then the multiplier obviously you can change up here if you don't want two times, you want one time, you want three times, whatever you like. You can change it here. Uh, but for the moment, I'll just, um, I'll go low and high. So that's just a little bit different from the last time, but that can be changed any way you wish. Okay, so the next part is where we build the trade logic. Um, so this time, what we need to do is, um, I'm going to build the long and the short into the same loop. So I'm just going to start by bringing in the long variables that I want. And I'm going to do the same thing for the short variable. So all the same things. It's a little, Once again, the, the code's quite bloated. It could definitely be done more efficiently. In fact, it might be an exercise for yourself if you're trying to develop your own programming to see if you can take this code, which at least works, and make it more efficient. Now, I'm also going to declare a third set of variables, which can be used across both longs and shorts. So I don't need to declare those twice. I'm just going to declare them once. Uh, and now we can move into the loop. So we're just going to start off here as we always do for i in range the length of the data frame so we're just telling the code to check through each line of the data frame and so the first thing we're going to do here is set the entry points so if the swing equals higher high and the position is none then the long price is going to equal the high of that row and the same thing for the shorts if swing equals lower lower low then pos and position equals none the short price will equal the low of that swing. So they're our entry points. So now we're going to do our long entry conditions, uh, which are virtually the same, except I've brought in the check to make sure that if we've got a long entry price and the market opens higher than that long entry price, then we receive a fill at the open. So uh, if long price does not equal zero, and we've recorded one up here, and the swing does not equal high high and position equals none, Okay, so if that is the case, if the high is greater than the long price and the open is less than the long price, so we open below the trigger price, the entry date would equal the index, the long stop price is the daily stop as before, and position is now long. Now this elif 
if the open is higher than the long price okay so we've opened through our price then we are going to take everything the same except our long price our entry price is now the open and position equals long and this elif is the same as before if the swing if we get a swing that says lower high meaning the market starting to trend down or we get a swing that says lower low well we're not really interested in buying the market anymore so we'll just reset the variables back to zero and we will move on with the loop so now we're going to do the same thing for the short entry uh, all the logic's exactly the same just reversed so we're looking for lower lows and if the low is less than the short price but the open is higher than the short price then we can get a fill at the short price uh, take note here I'm obviously not including slippage at this stage position would be short and the same thing if the open is under our short price our entry price then we will just take the open as our entry price and position will be short and the same thing here if the swing equals if we get a swing that equals higher high or a swing that equals higher low we think the market's now trending up and we're not interested in buying that swing so we would just reset the variables back to nothing so now we're just going to put in uh, the logic for the long stop so if position equals long and you're doing a long position obviously if the low is less than or equal to the stop price now I put the same check in here because we could have situations where the market opens through our stop and if that's the case we don't get the stop price we get the open price so we're just going to say if the low is less than the stop price and the open of that row is greater than the stop price when we opened above the stop then we'll take the stop price and if the open was below or equal to the stop price then we're just going to take the open as our exit price uh, so that's that and then this part down here is the same this is just the trailing spot stop so the low is greater than the long stop price meaning we didn't get stopped out uh, and then if the daily stop long is greater than the long price then we're going to adjust that stop price up to our new stop price and we're just going to append this is once again this is just for plotting because it makes it a bit easier we're going to append the stop price for the day to a list so when we go back we can uh, blend it into the data frame and do our plotting now I should also just quickly point out as opposed to the last code that we had I this was just stop I'm making it long trail now because we want to sort of differentiate between the long stops and the short stop prices so now we're going to do the short stops and it's exactly the same everything's exactly the same except we just reverse all the logic um, to deal with short positions uh, and the same check is in place to make sure that we didn't open lower than our stop price and if we did then we get stopped out on the open uh, and then we're going to append all the stop prices to a list uh, and short trail is going to be how we identify those so now we're just going to record all those trades so trade so the exit price is the is with the exit price isn't differentiated so either long or short we get an exit price so if the exit price does not equal zero I mean we've got an exit now if we're if the position equals long which means we've got a long exit then we're just going to record all the details into the long trades list and if the position is short we're going to append all the details into the short trades list so that's pretty much the same as before obviously just with the short everything's just reversed now the next thing we want to do is we want to reset the variables within this if statement so within this inner loop we want to reset well if we've got a long position the short price will be zero anyway but I just think it's just easier and cleaner to just reset it all so we're all we're back to zero we're back to square we've got no position and the loop can start again and start looking for the next trade so now we're at the end of the loop so all we need to do is turn and make a new data frame called long trades and we're just going to make that out of the long trades list same for long trail same for short trades and same for short trail tf okay a little bit of a mouthful and then even though i think i did this outside the loop last time but um the long trail uh, we're just going to reset all the indexes so that they're all dates so hopefully I can run this and it'll work okay so that's run so now just to show you we can bring up long trades DF and that will show us our long trades we don't have too many in this date range uh, and short trades DF bring that up uh, and we don't have too many either so you can see from this on a daily system we're only going over the course of one year but the reason I picked this particular point is because I know there was a big fat you can see this big fat short trade over COVID um, and I did that just so that I could 
see clearly that the algorithm was working as intended. So now we've got that in place, I'm just going to concat both those data frames, to uh, the trades data frames together um, into a new data frame called total trades. And then I'm just going to sort that data frame by the index so that we get a chronological order. So total trades, yeah, total trades, that's all we need to do if we run that. You can see that's just those trades put together, but they're in chronological order. So you can see the trades as they pop up there. Now at this point, you could do some just really basic benchmarking. Um, so just to see how things performed over the course of that year, uh, buy and hold versus uh, our swing system. Um, so it's, just, it's the same as the last time, but we're just using total trades as, as our DF. So we can just do that. And then we can just print out the buy and hold total and we can work out the swing return. And if we just run that, so if you had a bought and hold that the, the the spider contract was fifty dollars higher but if you had a trade of the swing return you would have got seventy dollars so just in this instance it did actually outperform but the one thing i will say is anytime you're going through any of these sort of systems um you've got to pay attention to um any sort of outlying result that might have skewed uh, the result really positive. So we've got two pretty big trades in there. So that's why visualization plotting is good because you can go back and see what happened with the market because obviously it caught one of the big sell-offs in from the COVID um, run, but obviously that's not going to re be repeated every day. So that's just something you've got to be aware of when you're sort of doing up these systems is just to check for outlying um, trades that might really skew the result one way you could do it is you could take even though i've got a very small sample here if you've got a big sample you could take like the top five percent and the bottom five percent trades out and then give yourself a bit of an average so you can see how it's sort of performing over time but i digress actually before i move on to the plotting so the reason why i'm just going to separate that this out is because when you take a really big data size a data sample the plotting will sort of start to become pretty messy because it's trying to jam a lot more information into a much smaller plot. So before we do that, I'll just run this little example. So I've just come back up to the top here and I'm just gonna take all the data from 2000, oh, that might be too much, let's make it 2010. From the start of 2010 all the way up to today uh, and let's see what it does. So we just need to restart and, and run it all again. But obviously the results, everything's going to be much bigger. So obviously our total trades, we've got 82 total trades this time. Uh, and we can see here that the buy and hold over that period actually did outperform the swing return quite drastically. So once again, we need to take into consideration if we're actually trading that we might be upping our size as we go along. So the actual profit and losses will be different. But... I might do that in part three, have a look at sort of position sizing and stuff like that. Um, but this is just a, a just a, a basic example. But the reason I'm only going to use a year is because it just makes the plots cleaner and we can just see to make sure that everything's working as it should. So I've just reverted back to the start of 2020 to the start of 2021 for this example. So now we're just going to do the formats that we need to do for plotting. Uh, slightly different, a little bit more stuff built in um, but follow along so what we're going to do is we're going to do our merging so into our data frame we're going to merge the long trail data frame and we're going to use long trail that's the actual stop price and we're also going to merge in from the short trail data frame the short trailing stop price and then we're also going to merge in uh, the entry price from our total trades we're just doing this for, for, for the sake of plotting so we're merging three data frames into our original data frame so just so you remember that the long trail data frame just contains all the trailing price all the prices of stops that we were using while whilst we had a position which is strictly for plotting it won't affect the outcomes at all um, and obviously the short trail data frame would look exactly the same so now that we've merged those together, you can see we've got our long trail price, our short trail price, and our entry price on any trade that we're doing. 
So now we just need to move on to the plotting. So first we're going to extract the relevant data for the plot. So we're just going to take the dates and, and put that as an index, uh, sorry, as a variable, open, high, low, close. We're going to do long stop prices and short stop prices, which is just going to take those variables that we just, uh, sorry, those that data that we just fed into the original data frame. Now you don't necessarily have to merge it in. You can sort of tell Plotly to just take it from different data frames, but I'm just trying to keep it a bit, a bit more simple and a bit cleaner. So now we're just going to put in this line of code to create the chart, uh, create a figure for the candlestick plot. So it's just figure equals go dot figure in brackets. And then next we're just going to add the candlestick trace. So we're just basically all we're really doing is just creating a candlestick chart. So we just put in the open, high, low, close and we're going to call it candlestick. So now we're just going to add the long stop line. So we're just going to add a trace. Basically we got a, a scatter line to scatter plot. Now the slight differences here. I've just put days plus an offset of one. Um, I just sort of saw something visually in the chart that doesn't make a difference. It's more just a visualization thing, but that stop line um, plots one day out from where you, you'd want to see it. So just, just for visualization, I'm just going to offset the plot by one. It's the same value. It just shifts it across the chart one. Um, so we, the only thing we've done here is we're calling it long stop prices line's going to be red. You can change the line colors to whatever you want. Um, and we're going to do the same thing for the short stop line. We're just adding one day offset. This block of code is the same. Add annotations for the swings. So we just got our higher highs, higher lows, etc. The one thing I'll note with this is when you look at this Y position, depending on what you're using, say, say you were using, say you're trying to do it on, say, Bitcoin, you wouldn't want it five dollars above the higher low you'd probably want it more like 500 so just depending on what you're using and what the price is you'll you'll have to adjust this volume just so that those notations are just somewhere where they're clear but out of the way but otherwise this is exactly the same so this block of code is is more or less the same as the last time where we're just basically adding that line so when we get a higher high we just want to draw a line across the chart until that is broken which shows that we've got a trade initiated. So that's what that do. The color here is green. You can change it to whatever you like. In fact, you can change the chart any way you want, really. I think I've got a tutorial, basic tutorial on Plotly, which shows you how to manipulate the charts and colors and all that sort of stuff to change it to however you want it. You might want to take a look at that if these standard setups are not to your liking. And now we're just going to bring in a block of code which does exactly the same thing that this higher high block does. It's just going to do it for the lower lows and the color is going to be orange. But once again, change it to whatever you like. And then to finish off, we're just going to update the layout with some titles and, and we make the range slider uh, invisible because I don't like it. Uh, and then we just want to show the plot. So hopefully when we run this, it'll it'll work out. Okay, and here's our plot. So this was this was the trade that I was most interested in, just to make sure that everything was working correctly. So we got the lower low. We had a lower high, but it, you know it was only looking for something that was a higher high, probably really. But we broke here. This is where the stop starts. Okay, so that price here is two times the ATR above this high point. Okay, so that's, you know, you could adjust it to the close or whatever you like. And then obviously it trailed all the way down here and we got stopped out at this point. Uh, now we got a higher high in here, which we broke. And so the trailing stop starts and we stay long till we get stopped out at this point. Uh, and we got a higher high here. So that, that everything looks like it's working. This is the reason that I, I, I printed the offset, even though it's, um, let's just zoom in here a little bit closer. At one point, that this line went through this candle before we got stopped out. Now, this is when I had it set to close. In fact, why don't I just set it to close just to show you an example? Yeah, so this is this is why I, I changed those. So I've changed it back to taking the ATR off the close, and I took the offset off. But you can see here, you might have got confused because you can see here that, that the candle is through the stop price. But really, that's not right because this candle was working off the stop price of this day, which was up here. Okay, so if we shift it, if we shift this line along one, then we're we're offset, and and it shows more clearly where we should be getting stopped out. Now, because I've set this to the clo uh, to the closing price rather than the high price, uh, even though it's the same here, 
uh, we actually got stopped out a little bit sooner. So yes, it would have had an effect on the overall um, result. So by bringing that offset in, you can see on this candle today, stop price was actually up here. So that's it's just a visual. It didn't change anything other than visually you can see on the chart what's going on. So that is why I've put the offset in place. So that's it for this video. So I'll probably, you know, depending on um, engagement, I'll, I'll look at part three where we can start to look at things like position sizing and stuff like that. Maybe even start to introduce some brokerage. Maybe we'll build in a bit of slippage. Um, you know, things of that nature that can sort of just refine things a bit down. And the other thing we can do is maybe start to sharpen up and look at some uh, more in-depth metrics. So that'll be the subject of another video. So thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, like and subscribe would be appreciated. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.